Okay, those of you who are taking thesis seminar wanted to talk a little bit about headings and also how you can organize the uh, the headings of your of your appendices. This is in the classroom. I'm Benjamin Stewart at benjaminlstewart.org. If you take a look at your thesis template for writing a thesis uh, paper, okay, the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to here is your abstract and then a page that I inserted table of contents So we're going to come back to this uh, here in a few minutes but uh, do take a look at your own document and I would add a page after uh, your abstract now let's look at your appendices so at the very end your abstract should come after your reference section okay so we are uh, discussing Basically, everything that we talk about as far as form and formatting, uh, we're thinking about APA. So um, take a look at your appendix. Take a look here where you have the title. All right, so remember that each of your instruments, each document, uh, maybe a questionnaire that you're going to include in your appendices, make sure that you have this as a heading one. So take a look under this drop-down menu. Okay, these are all of your styles. And we're going to primarily focus on Heading 1 and Heading 2. All right, so our Appendix A title is going to be a Level 1 heading according to APA. So go up here and select Heading 1. Now to be able to, what I would recommend is I would first select it make sure that it's times new roman font size 12 and it's in bold and then when you come down here to level one heading i would click update heading one to match oops yeah okay so again select the text go to styles heading one and click Update heading one to match. If you don't do this, whatever style that you have already preset here is going to replace the style that you have here. So we want to maintain the uh, same font size and type. So Times New Roman font size 12. Make sure it's centered to the text. Make sure it's in bold. And also take note of your slider bars to make sure that they're all the way to the left here. So you don't have, for example, you know, anything slid over uh, to the top there. This is going to be your first heading. Now, below Appendix A, I'm going to include the title, the name of whatever it is in this appendix. So let's say that it's a student questionnaire. So I have the title of whatever it is. It could be an observation sheet. It could be an interview guide. For the teacher, it could be an interview guide for focus group, whatever it is, give it a title. Make sure it's notice just one space, one double space below the level one heading. You can also double check your line spacing, making sure that it's double spaced, making sure that there's no additional space between paragraphs. Then select your text and then go back up here to styles and do the same thing, but now we're going to label this a level or a heading two. Make sure you click Update Heading 2 to match. Okay, so notice it didn't change the, the font type or the size, but notice here when we click on this line, it says Level 2, or Heading 2, I should say, and Appendix A. Okay, now it looks like something went wrong here because it says normal text, which is not what we want. So let's select it again. Heading 1, update to match. <clears throat> and we'll scroll back up here. For some reason, it jumped me down to the next page. But now it says heading 1. So this is what we want. Here's level 2 or heading 2. I keep say saying level 2, but... Uh, it's the same heading one or level one. And then we have a level two heading here. And then just below this is where you're going to begin the actual instrument and make sure that it's in normal text. 
Okay, so this is what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to go back throughout your template, throughout your document. Anytime you see a level one heading, go back and make sure that you've selected uh, heading one. Now notice here, I've already done this, and it actually changed this. So if you hit, this is the difference between apply and update. Update is simply going to um, use the, the current font that you've selected, and it's going to uh, keep that same font. Probably the best thing I should have done is just to apply it once, right? If I apply this here, let's see what happens. If I apply it, and let's say that I want to, just to test here, put some text here, select it, and okay, so now it's replaced it. So now you'll notice here that now the... Uh, Times New Roman font size 12 style has been replaced. And if I select this, this is what we want. Okay. So you can do that as well in your own document. But go back and make sure that each of your level 1 and level 2 headings, make sure that you've selected the correct style. Now, some of you are going to have a level 3 heading that's going to be within your uh, literature review sections and perhaps even the results and discussion section. I would not worry about assigning a level 3 heading to a style. Okay, so you'll, you'll have a level 3 heading, but keep it as normal text. And the reason that I suggest that is because, let's go now to our table of contents. So remember we have inserted our table of contents after the abstract. Now you may ask, well, why, why do we need, is it important that we have the abstract before the table of contents, or should we include the abstract within the table of contents? And this is uh, my justification, my reasoning, because I've seen it. In, I've seen it both ways. I've seen the abstract come before the table of contents, and I've also seen the abstract come after the table of contents. But uh, the my justification is the purpose of an abstract is to give the reader enough information about the entire document in order for the reader to decide whether or not he or she wants to read the rest of it, right? So it's a, it's a snapshot. It's an overview of the entire document, right? The, the problem being researched, uh, any details about the methodology, the findings, conclusions, all of that information needs to be within a 150 to 250 word abstract. If someone doesn't want to read the paper after having read the abstract, why have them even consider looking at the table of contents? you have the table of contents first, you're really forcing them to read all of the details from the table of contents without really knowing the gist of your paper. To get the gist, they need to read the abstract. Okay, so have the abstract first, insert a page, and create a page called table of contents. It's going to be a level one heading. Now, in this case, this is going to be the only level one heading that we're going to use normal text and so here I've changed it back to normal text I need to go back and select Times New Roman font size 12 we need it in bold and we need to center it now go a couple of spaces below the heading table of contents and go to insert table of contents And I would select with page numbers, and voila, you now have a table of contents. Now, where does this information come from? It comes from your styles, your level one, level two headings. Okay, so you'll notice here that there's a couple of things we still need to go back and check. Make sure that all of these are Times New Roman. Um, make sure that you only include level one, level two headings. But basically, this is uh, why... Uh, setting up your headings, level 1 and level 2, setting them up uh, in your style so that you can very easily create a table of contents. Whenever, and you can do this throughout the process because what's good about this is if you have all your headings set up correctly, if you need to go back, if you make any changes to your document, you can simply update the table of contents and it's going to update the page numbers, it's going to update any 
headings, any additional headings or changes or modifications that you made to those headings, it will update it automatically. Of course, you can also right-click and delete the table of contents and generate it all again. Just make sure that sometimes, and I'm noticing here that it, it did not do this, but sometimes when you generate or insert a table of contents, it will put a title called table of contents. And what I usually end up doing is just manually removing that heading so I can have my own heading here called table of contents. All right, so a couple of things here, how to develop a table of contents, double checking your styles throughout your whole paper. Again, only heading one, heading two, th those are the only two that we're gonna have to deal with because here you'll see we have a level one here and these are our level twos here. And I didn't show you this, but I went in and created uh, the headings for these particular, uh, the styles for these particular headings uh, earlier. Okay, so I hope this helps. Um, again, make sure that in your appendix section at the very end that you have titles for each and you've ha you have your headings set up appropriately as I have it here. The final thing I'll say about the appendix section is if you have a survey or a questionnaire that is multiple pages, then I would, and I would make sure that you have headings like this where you say something like continued. Okay, and so and then continue on with the instrument. Now, in these cases, I would select normal text because you don't want this to appear necessarily in the table of contents. I don't think it's necessary to have <clears throat> uh, these subsequent headings that are just a continuation of the same instrument. Okay, so again, these types of headings that are going to be labeled continued, just label them as normal text. I hope this helps. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave comments in your Google Docs or shoot me an email, and I'll try to clarify. This has been In the Classroom. I'm Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.org.